What's up, guys? Welcome to the Behind the Comments podcast. Um, I'm you already know who I am. Um, normally, I would have my camera on right now, but right now, I am literally to the point of almost being in tears, and I don't want you guys to see that. I mean, I know that it would show, you know, what's really going on, but I don't want you guys to see me like that. Tonight's podcast is going to be different. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about Music Biz Marty and how he damn near ruined my entire life. I'm going to tell you guys the full real story that he will not tell you. I'm going to tell you guys everything that you need to know and why it is that I'm not getting anywhere like a lot of you guys are always asking. A lot of you guys are always asking like, hey dude, why aren't you getting anywhere? What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And for those of you that are always asking that, just know that I genuinely, and I do mean genuinely, appreciate you guys. I do. I genuinely appreciate what you guys do and how you guys are always asking me if I'm okay. But I'm going to be honest, I'm tired of hiding from the truth. I'm tired of Music Biz Marty, a.k.a. Nicholas Beagler, getting away with all these lies that he's done. And I feel like it's time that somebody spoke out and did something about it. Because a lot of you guys are always asking, well, why do you why do you get bullied? Why do people hate on you? Why does the why this why that? Well, let me explain this to you. Um, but before I get into that, like before I start talking and explaining everything to all my fans that watch my stuff and to all my subscri- all my amazing subscribers that actually enjoy my content. If you guys saw me going off on Marty's panel, I'm sorry you had to see me like that. I do not like being like that. I hate being mad like that. I hate being angry. I hate being upset. I hate being pissed. Like I I hate it. But the reason why I'm like that is because of Marty. So... With that being said, allow me to explain. From the very beginning. You see, back in 2017, I was working with a good friend of mine by the name of Ian Duxworth, who was, at the time, he was an amazing, amazing artist. He went by the name of Bradley. I had met this dude on a YouTube group on Facebook. Like, literally, like, a year prior to 2017, me and him had met on a mutual group that we were part of on YouTube. And I found that this kid was an amazing artist because he was asking if anybody in the group was a YouTuber at all or did music. And I told him, yeah, I do music. Like, let's, you know... Let's talk and let's get to working together. The dude was so talented. And even to this day, I wish that dude nothing but the best in the world. Like, he was one of the most amazing rappers that I have ever met in my life. Like, this kid was, like, he was a young kid, but he was so talented. Like, me and this dude worked together on a constant basis, like, after getting to know each other. You know, we ended up working on a couple projects together, and then after that, those projects became more frequent, and then eventually we ended up starting a label together called Bloodshot Records that was basically inspired by our relentless work ethic and how we were constantly putting out music, constantly working on stuff. And, you know, it was going good. And then eventually we ended up starting our own podcast called the Chill with the Boys podcast where we had, you know, several 
several artists that we were either good friends with or that we looked up to, like the pretty well-known Ninja with a Pencil. Come on, y'all. Mm, sorry about that. You guys ever get that feeling like you got to sneeze and it won't come out? That's what I just had. But like I said, you know, we had guys on the podcast like Ninja with a Pencil who was a really nice guy. Like, he was a really cool dude. Uh, we had had friends on, like I said, that were either music artists or just good friends of ours. And there was a day where he had to work and he was asking, like, hey, can you take over the podcast while I'm at work? And I told him, yeah, I can do that because I already know what to talk about. I knew what the schedule was. I knew what was going on. And we were doing good. Like, we were doing really good. And, you know, so I took over the podcast for the day. And I started talking and stuff. Had a couple of the people on. Had a couple friends on. And I saw this dude in our chat by the name of Music Biz Marty running his mouth. Now, at the time, I thought that it was actually Music Biz Marty, like the one that I now know. Well, it turned out that that one was a fake. See, what had happened is this dude came in the chat pretending to be Marty. And I brushed it off at first, I ignored it. But then this guy kept popping in and popping in and popping in. And then what happened? I ended up cracking. I've, I ended up, if you guys remember Ryan Upchurch from back in the day, you guys know how he used, how he used to make people look stupid. Like he would crack jokes on them and funny videos. I ended up doing that. I did. I ended up making a few videos. Firing back at this guy, making him look stupid, making funny videos. Well, little did I know that those would get back to the real Music Biz Marty. And I was unaware that this guy was a fake. So once I found out that the guy that was in the chat was a fake, I ended up trying to reach out to the original Music Biz Marty, who's the one that we all know. And I tried explaining to him... But he didn't want to listen at first. And then he did. And then he also ended up seeing me as a money grab. He saw me as a quick way to make cash. Because he saw that I do music. He had seen my dance videos that I did a few times. He had seen all kinds of shit. And he saw that as an opportunity to take advantage of me. And the way he decided to take advantage of me after approaching me and after I had turned him down many times, he decided to wait. After I turned him down many times, he had decided to wait until me and him were on a panel with the real Miss Jamie Nicole, who sadly is no longer among the living because she had passed away. Um, but me, Marty, Jamie, and my now ex, Heather, who was living with me at the time, um, she was living with me and my family at the time, this guy by the name of Juggalo John, kept running his mouth and talking shit. So, me and Heather all hopped on a panel. And because this guy was talking shit on Jamie's panel, we got on and we were like, alright, let's fucking... Since this guy wants to talk shit, you know, since this dude wants to run his fucking mouth, you know, let's get on Jamie's panel and let's actually show me going there because this dude lived in my area. He loved 
And I mean love to talk shit. And when I say love to talk shit, this dude was not in a good headspace. He was constantly talking about, oh, he saw me here or he saw me there when I never was. I didn't even know who this guy was. But this dude was talking about being at the community center, which is not even um, not even two minutes away from my house. So me, my mom, and my now ex Heather, and my stepdad Ed, we all got in the car at the time, and we drove down there. I went down there, and I showed up ready to fight. Had Heather have the, like, I had Heather point the camera at me on the live stream. Well, I sat there for about 10 minutes, waited for this dude. He never showed at all. He never fucking showed. So I got back in the car after about 10 minutes of walking around waiting for this guy. And on our way back, Music Biz Marty decided to decided to make a pass at me. We'll just say that. He decided to make not a sexual advance, but an advance towards me. He tried to hit on me. And I told him, no, that I'm not interested. because, And at first, I didn't catch it. My ex-girlfriend, Heather, at the time, had told me what he had said because I didn't catch it because there was a lot of people talking. Well, after I had went back and I watched rewatched what was said, I got back on panel and I told him, look, you know, I understand that, you know, that you have a thing for me and I'm flattered, but I'm just, I'm not interested. And I turned him down. When I turned him down the second time, that's when things went and started to go south. He started doing little things here and there to get under my skin, and I, I ignored it at first. But then he did something that would potentially ruin my life for the rest of my life. Or almost, that would almost ruin my life. He decided that after I was called out as being this and that and the other by my ex Candle, who was a psychotic individual, and I do mean psychotic because she was, she was the kind of girl that when she gets with a dude, and they leave her, she calls them all kinds of names and this and that and the other, says that they raped her and this and that, when none of that is true. Well, at one point, she decided to make me look like I supposedly raped her, uh, said that I was a pedophile, that I jerked off in front of her, um, like in front of her young family members when I never did. Like, that's how psychotic she was. And the reason why she said that is because I left her ass. Because she genuinely was a psychopath. And that was her way of getting back at me. But what she did got me a lot of hate. She decided to make it look like she had taken her own life. She had basically forced uh, Paul Caston, who was a good friend of mine at the time, he had, she had forced him to tell me that I was responsible for her taking her life. She had faked her death. And the, the way that she forced him to do it was, and I did not find this out until later, she would basically, and I heard this from Paul himself, she threatened to go after his kid. He is a dad. 
And honestly, he's an amazing dad. Like, I've watched this dude be around his kids, and he's an amazing, amazing, amazing father. Like, this dude is one of the best fathers that I've ever seen. Like, he actually likes to be around his children. He likes spending time with them. Like, he's an all-around good dude. But, Marty would soon start attacking me over that. Saying that I killed Candle, that, you know, I was responsible for her death. And then we later found out that she was not dead. And... A lot of that brought on a lot of hatred. And during that time period, Marty saw me as a cash grab because he saw how volatile I was and how quick I was to snap on somebody that talked shit on me. Well, after I turned him down the second time, he decided to use... The idea to make me his. He wanted me so badly to be his. Because he he won't tell you this, but he is bisexual. And I don't have anything against gay people. My older brother was gay and I have all kinds of friends that are part of the LGBTQ plus community. So I do fully support the LGBTQ plus community. Like, I fully support it. But, because I turned him down like I did, he decided to get back at me and figured since he couldn't have me, then I couldn't do anything. So, what did he do? He hired Mass Troll Mafia at the time. To at first talk to me on panel and we talked and at first she was cool At first I thought she was okay, and then I later found out that she was a drug addict And I as much as I cared about her I could not be around that for my own sake and not because I'm a druggie or this or any other no because I have watched way too many friends lose their lives over drugs and I could not I was not willing to put myself in that same position again. So I distanced myself from her and went about my day and did my stuff, you know. Went about doing my music and my artwork and my gameplay videos and all that shit. Well, and soon after that, would come the worst day of my life. Marty had hired her the second time to basically isolate me from my friends and from everybody and from me being able to do anything without him. He decided to hire Mass Troll Mafia to make me look like a pedophile. And they won't tell you this shit. They will not tell you the truth. Because they love to twist the story to make it look like something that it's not. Like, they love to twist that story around. So, what did he do? Or what did you... You're probably thinking, well, what did she do? She pretended... To be a grown-ass adult, an 18-year-old fan, he gave her my number. And at the time, I was unaware that it was her. She had used a voice changer on on a phone call, pretended to be 18 years old. And we talked for a good few hours. And she seemed pretty cool. Like she did. She seemed pretty cool. And I had thanked her for being a fan of my music and my videos and this and that and the other. And she ended up 
later on calling me back for a little bit and we talked some more. And then she ended up admitting that she had liked me. And at that time, I was single. I had already broken up with Heather. Um, Heather had already gone back home. Um, I was already, you know, I was I was single. I was doing my stuff. Still am single. But that's neither here nor there. But, you know, she had told me that she liked me. Like, and I mean, she genuinely made it look like she wanted to be with me. And I told her, all right, cool. I'll give her a chance. And, you know, we got to talking for a few hours by text because she told me she had to go. And then what did she do? She turned around and was like, hey, you know, she did what norm, you know, what any couple would do when you're in separate states. She was like, hey, you know. Things, you know, things got steamy. She was like, hey, you know, I'm kind of feeling in a certain mood, blah, 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 blah. I cool. I, I, I was willing to oblige it. You know, I was willing to oblige that. Well, she basically was, you know, we got to talking stuff heated up by text. You know, things got real, real steamy. Well, she then turned around and was like, hey, you know. Can I see a picture of you? And by picture of me, I'm sure you guys can guess. So I did. And then she turned around and sent me one of her. And bear in mind, at the time, she was still claiming to be 18 years old. Well, little did I know that after I said, okay, you know, your turn. You know, because she had, you know, you know, when you're with somebody, it's like, hey, you know, hey, your turn, you know. Well, she had then sent a picture of her. And I called her cutie because, you know, that that's what you do when you're couples, man. You have, you know, different nicknames and stuff like that. And so I did that, you know, just being nice. Well, she ended up, like I said, sending the picture of her. Well, then right after that, she had claimed to be underage right after she had sent that picture of herself. Right after I had commented on the picture that she had sent, she had claimed to be underage. Right after that, when she won't tell you this because she deleted that part of it. She wiped that part of the message. I told her, what the fuck? Like, why are you doing this? And she would, she won't tell you that. She will not tell you that. She, like, when she claimed to be underage, I said, what the actual fuck? Like, do you not realize that I can get in trouble because of this shit? Because you're pretending to be of age and this and that and the other. Like, I went off. And so I immediately blocked her number. And, you know, I let it go. I immediately blocked her, let it go, starting, you know, and I started to let friends know, hey, be careful of this number. This chick is a scam. She's a scam artist. She's a troll. She's, you know, this and that and the other. She likes to catfish people. Well, no sooner than that, I would later find out that one of my friends who still paid attention to Marty sent me the link to Mass Troll Mafia's video, a.k.a. Kate Peters, the one that Marty hired. Mass Troll Mafia was on live stream during the whole thing laughing about it. And that night, the police got called out here for, I forget what it was, but somebody had called the cops out here that night, and I had showed them, <clears throat> you know, I had showed them what went down. Well, I had showed them the text messages, I showed them everything, and then I showed them the stream where Kate was laughing. And they straight out said that I am not a pedophile, I just have to be more careful of who I talk to. 
and that I do need to be more careful, which I completely understood. I completely understood that. And so I was. I was very careful from then on out. But after that, I got called pedophile. I got called basically every name in the book that you guys can think of. And that went on for several years. That went on from like 2021 all the way up to like to current day. But during that whole time period of when that was when it was really, really bad, I was looking for a way to get away from it. I was looking for a way to get a fresh start. And at that time, myself and Nylet were actually good friends at the time. We had been good friends for like fucking four years. And to me, he was like an older brother. You know, he was a good dude. He was like an older brother to me. And so I had gotten on Twitch because I had, you know, wanted, because I had had a Twitch for a while, mind you. I just never really, I never really used it like that. And then I ended up, you know, talking to Nylet because he was like, hey, you know, like I want a way to make some sort of an income. So I told him like, hey, you know, why don't you start a Twitch? I'll help you out. And he did good. Like, he did real good. Like, he was doing very, very well for for himself. Like, he took off almost immediately. Like, at first he started out doing gameplay videos on YouTube. And then eventually migrated over to Twitch. And he did great. And when I say doing great, I mean this dude took off almost instantaneously. And when he started taking off, he was like, hey, let me help you out with your Twitch. Because I see that you're working hard trying to get your stuff up. So let me let me raid your channel. Let me get you up there a bit. And he had done so well. At that time, I had had like, what, like 15 followers. He bumped it up from 15 to well over 400. And from there, I started doing my thing. I started doing, you know, vocal covers. I started doing gameplay, having fun. I was doing good for myself. Like, I was happy. I was excited. I was finally doing something that I enjoyed. And I took it from, like, 500 to, like, 860-some-odd followers. Well, I had gotten it to the point to where... 20 of those people were paid subscribers. I was making $111 a month. And I know that in the grand scheme of things, that's not very much. That's really not. That's not very much at all. But for me, starting out, I was excited to just to just be making a living doing something that I genuinely, genuinely enjoy, you know? Hanging out with good people. Having a good time. You know, being myself. Well, Marty caught wind of this. He caught wind that I was making money without him. Because I was starting to move on. I was starting to do my own thing. You know, and I was doing very, very well for myself, you know. I had moved on. I was doing good. I wasn't paying him any attention. I was focusing on myself, my Twitch career. I was doing good. Well, Marty caught wind of this. And decided to make it look like I was doing stuff outside of Twitch that I was not doing. And he had several, and I do mean several hundred people, report my Twitch. Which ultimately ended up... It it ended me up getting fired from Twitch. Um, I had actually had... A lot of, like, I had had some major sponsors that I was talking to. I had had small sponsorships under my belt. 
some, you know, some really good sponsors that I had, you know, been in talk with for months at that time. Like, I had had a few, like, small, you know, not real big, but, like, super small, like, you know, energy drink companies that were very similar to Gamer Subs. Like, there were smaller companies. Um, I was actually in talks at one point with Death Wish Coffee at the time, which I was super excited for. I was also in uh, talks at the time over email. They w It wasn't official yet. But a lot of the sponsors had included companies like Monster Energy, um, who I was in talks with for a potential sponsor, um, Death Wish Coffee, and a couple other like really big sponsors that I was really working hard on, you know, getting under my belt because, you know, I've always been a huge fan of Monster Energy. I love the product. I drink Monster Energy all the time, and I'm a massive, massive coffee drinker. Like, I drink coffee, literally, I swear to God, my blood is practically made of this shit. I swear to God it is. My blood is practically made of this shit. But, um, I ended up getting let go of Twitch. And I ended up losing all the sponsors I had. Um, a lot of them, actually all the major sponsors that I was in talks with, they ended up finding out and cutting me as a result. And I was pissed. I was fucking devastated. Like, I was literally devastated. And so, after about a month of taking a break, I ended up going back to my roots as a YouTube channel, like, as a YouTuber, and was doing really good, I had shot up really quickly, I had worked my ass off for, like, two and a half months after that, and I had ended up getting to a thousand subscribers, like, when I say getting to a thousand subscribers and working my ass off, like, I worked my ass off every fucking day just to get there like I had worked so fucking hard to get there and I do mean very hard to get there like I had put out content just day in and day out day in and day out just constant vocal covers constant gameplay constant live streaming you know, doing things that I genuinely fucking enjoy. But then what happened? They not only did... Not only did half of the YouTubers or the people that followed me do a mass on subbing, but they also mass reported my channel. And the way that I found this out was at the time I was good friends with another music artist that was from Canada. Um, I don't actually quite remember the dude's name. Um, all I know is that the dude's name was Michael. Well, I had gone to sleep the night before with a thousand and I think like 16 subscribers. Okay. I had went to bed with over a... Over a thousand sixteen subs, right? Well, I wake up the next morning to prepare for, you know, my job as a YouTuber. Like, I had, I had prepared for work. I was getting ready for my day. You know, I got up, got breakfast, blah, 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 blah. And I was still half asleep at the time. When he had blow, he was blowing up my fucking, you know, stuff. He was blowing up my Facebook, because we had met on Facebook. Well, he ended up telling me, like, dude, your, your YouTube's gone, your YouTube's gone. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, dude, your YouTube is fucking gone, dude. It got nuked. And I was like, what the fuck? So I went on there, and I found out that I had gotten banned, or not banned, but my account had gotten uh, shut down by mass reporting again, 
So after that, it became very, very difficult for me to do anything. Like, it became very difficult for me to do anything. And, you know, I kept on dealing with, you know, YouTube channels being reported, shut down, being reported, shut down over and over and over and over again. And then, you know, William Glory Hole came in sometime after. And at first, I enjoyed his content because he had made, like, little, you know, Fast and Furious fan videos because at the time, I was doing a lot of car content. I was doing a lot of, you know, Forza content. Because, as a lot of you may or may not know, I'm a huge fan of the Forza franchise. I love Forza Horizon 1, 2, 3, and 4, and currently 5. Um, so, you know, I was, I'm a huge fan of the content. And so, I was doing that for a time, you know. I was doing that kind of content. Like, that's, that's what I did. And then, you know, after that, uh, those two initial videos, over the next few, you know, following months, the uh, next couple of years, I would find William getting pictures illegally that we did not post on the internet. And he would start attacking me. He would start, you know, going after me. And he did that for a very, very, very long time. And then he kind of sort of, you know, backed up as of, backed off as of recently. But that all went on until about, what was it, like last, yeah, it was about this time last year that N-Word Boy showed up. Now, N-Word Boy... He just flat out started attacking me. And at first I didn't take him serious. I did not take him serious at first. At first I thought he was just another like, you know, one of those shit talker trolls. Okay, cool. You know, talk your shit, do whatever. I could give less of a fuck, you know. And then N-Word Boy started doing very, very illegal shit. And when I say illegal shit, like, we're talking during that time period when I was working on, you know, some music. Because back in 2018, during the small part of everything, when, when you know, before all this shit, I had just dropped two albums back to back in 2018. They were dubstep albums. But, N-Word Boy, he decided to take the music that I had been releasing and steal it and create the name Lance Chilkins and he ended up stealing my music and getting the copyrights to it. Which is why it is currently very hard for me to release any kind of music because I don't have any money and every time I go to put something out, he steals it. Like, he will literally steal the songs from me and copyright them and release them all so that I cannot make any money. Which is what people like him want. They want to make it to where I do not make any money because they enjoy seeing me suffer. And I know that like all these trolls and everybody are going to say everything different, but I am telling you guys the honest truth. Everything I have said to you for the past, you know, like for the past half hour to 40 minutes has been 100% true. But they will not tell you that. And all of this stuff is why I am depressed every day. That's why I have PTSD. Because I've had people that I don't know show up to my house. Uh, I've had people try to kill me multiple times. I've had people bash the car, windshield in of my mom's car. 
You know, I've had people in masks show up to my house. I've had, you know, we've had several things stolen from us. And it's gotten to the point to where I cannot go outside anymore out of fear. Because I don't know if someone is going to hurt me if I'm outside or not. These people won't let me get a job. They won't let me do anything because they want to use me. I am literally a victim of extortion and blackmail. I am literally a victim of extortion and blackmail. And no one wants to believe me. My family isn't rich. I don't come from a rich family like that. I come from a humble background. I come from the country. I was born in Anchorage, Alaska, raised in Bellingham, Washington State, half my life out on a dairy farm. So my whole life has been spent just barely getting by. And I, I've always wanted better for my family. I have always wanted better for my family. And when my brother got sick with cancer, when he got diagnosed with cancer, I knew that I wanted to do something to help. And at the time, I was in high school, so I couldn't get a regular job back then. Because back then, you weren't allowed to get a job while you were still in high school. So, I was like, alright, let me do music. You know, let me do music on the side and see what I can do. See where I can take it. And I kind of went on and off, on and off with that for many years. And it never really panned out at first. And then, after high school, that's when I started taking it more serious. Because I was out of high school, I was able to focus on it more. You know, I could actually do things, you know. So I started taking it very, very serious. But it's because of people like N-Word Boy that I am not able to release any music as of right now as much as I want to. As much as I want to release music, I'm unfortunately unable to because I don't have the means to be able to do so right now. As much as I would love for that. And I can honestly say that music has saved my life on more than one occasion. Because of my depression, there has been times where I have actually attempted to kill myself multiple times. On these trolls live streams right there in front of them. Because I was so depressed. I felt like I didn't want to live anymore. I felt, I genuinely felt like I was better off dead. Like I genuinely felt like, damn, if I can't do what I love, then why am I even bothered? Like what's the point of living if I can't do what I love? And that happened twice in a row. And after the second time, I I sat there. After the second attempt, I had sat there in my room just bawling my eyes out. Because I wanted it to stop so bad. And I did not know what to do. I was genuinely fucking scared. I did not know what to do. All I knew is that I wanted this bullying to stop. And because of all the times that people have tried to kill me, all the bad things that had happened, people bashing me, slandering me, making me look like shit, that's why I have PTSD. That's why I suffer from depression every day of my life. Every day is a struggle for me. I have my days where the depression isn't there at all, and then I have days where it hits me like a ton of bricks, and I hate it. And I know what you guys are probably thinking. You're probably thinking, well, what about the thing with Tibbs? How did that come about? Well, let me explain that to you. 
Music Biz Marty, I don't know how he found my adoptive dad who helped raise me. I don't know how he found him. But he ended up finding my adoptive dad, getting him on panel. And at first, I didn't believe it. And then I went to his channel the one day. After, you know, a lot of people telling me over and over, like, hey, this dude, your, your dad's apparently on panel with Marty. And so I went on there and looked. I did. I went on there and I looked. And sure enough, he was on there. And I saw my dad sitting there laughing at me, talking shit. And, you know, so I confronted him. And at that time, like, I knew it was all just a ploy of Marty's to get me on panel. But at that time, I did not care one bit. I did not care one single bit. I was there to confront my dad. And little did I know that my own dad would disown me in front of over a thousand people right there in front of me. And let me tell you, when he did that and I got off a panel, let me tell you, I've had a lot of bad feelings in my life. But that right there was the worst feeling in my life. And I do mean the worst feeling in my fucking life, dude. Like, for the next three days after that, I was so upset and so hurt. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. I was literally, I was numb. I was genuinely numb because I was so depressed. I was so angry. I was so hurt and upset by the fact that my own dad could sit there and disown me in front of thousands of people. Like, I was genuinely hurt. Like, I was so fucking hurt that... I didn't get on YouTube for about a week. Like, I was so... I was so fucking devastated. And when I say... Devastated, like... It was like... I had just found out that... It was like I... It was like I, I was being stabbed in the back by my best friend or, you know, losing a family member. Like, that's how bad it hurt. And Tibbs saw what was going on because Marty had shown my dad the video where I had threatened to kill Marty if he showed up on my property to harm me and my family. Because, you know, a man has a right to defend his property and his family. A man has a right to defend, you know, what is, what's his. And so, um, my dad saw that video and threatened to sue me and my mom. And the reason why he did this was because the rifle that I had in that video was actually mine. That was actually my rifle that my dad had gifted to me the day that I was born. Like, he had gifted that rifle to me because he was like, hey. You know, he figured, like, hey, maybe my son will grow up to be, you know, this and the other. You know? And Tibbs knew that my dad was wanting to sue me, which he couldn't do because my mom had all the keyword had 
all the paperwork because we did end up selling it because we needed the money. But we had all the paperwork, all that shit. You know, we ended up selling the rifle. Well, my dad wanted to sue me. And Tibbs being who he is, he saw what I was going through. Helped me get away from the trolls for a while. And then turned around and hit me up on Instagram. Pretending to be this 15-year-old girl. And at first I thought that seemed kind of odd. But I played along with it for a little bit. Like nothing sexual or anything like that. But I played along with it. And then I finally caught them in a lie. And then I came out and said, look. I know that you're not underage. I know that you're a grown ass adult. Who are you? Be fucking honest. And I mean it. Be fucking honest with me. And then after that, they kept on persisting and, you know, claiming that they were underage when clearly they weren't. So I ended up blocking them. I actually ended up blocking them. Well, Tibbs, being who he is, pretended like, oh, I don't know anything, blah, blah, blah. Well, he ended up eventually lying to my face. And bear in mind, at this time, I was treating Tibbs TV like he was family because he had earned my respect. He had earned my brotherhood. He had earned and worked his ass to be able to be called family. Like, I literally hung out with this dude. I literally was a mod for this dude on his channel, and he was the same for me. He did the same thing on my channel. But what did this man do? He lied to my face. He lied to my fucking face, people. He sat right fucking there. And I mean right fucking there. And they, when I asked him if he was recording, he said no. But what he did next put me in a position that I had never been in. He had told me that if I did not admit to being a pedophile, that he was going to help my dad sue me and my family. And me, I didn't want to go to court with my dad because despite my dad disowning me, Despite him being a complete piece of shit, part of me still loved and cared about my dad. And I did not want to go to war with my own family. And the reason why I didn't want to do that is because I knew deep down that I would never be able to forgive myself. Because like I said, yes, my dad may be a royal piece of fucking shit. But there's part of me that still cares about him because he's the man that helped raise me, you know? That is literally the man that helped to raise me. And I felt like I had no choice. And to get Tibbs to leave me the hell alone, I ended up admitting and basically giving him what he wanted and... Telling him, like, hey, yes, I am a pedophile. Even though I didn't want to admit to it, I felt like I had no fucking choice. This man literally was threatening to help my dad sue us. And I didn't want that for myself. I didn't want that for my family. I did not want to go to court with my dad. I did not want to go against him because, like I said, even though he is a piece of fucking shit, Part of me still cares. Part of me still fucking cares about him. Because like I said, that's the man that helped to raise me. That's the man that inspired me to want to join the military ever since I was a little kid. Because when I was a kid, my dad was my hero. My dad was my superhero as a kid. 
to me, my dad was a superhero. To me, as a kid, I saw my dad as this larger-than-life superhero that was protecting the world from evil as a kid. And my entire life, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. When I was in high school, I had even taken the ASVAB. I had uh, become really good friends with the ROTC uh, recruiter. I had actually, you know, right out of high school, I was actually going to go into the Army. Right out of high school, I had already had it planned out. I was going to go into the Army, you know, and I was going to follow in his footsteps. But due to medical issues, I was not able to do so. Due to me having one kidney, one underdeveloped lung as a baby, and, you know, just all the different medical things that I had wrong with me, unfortunately, they would not let me join, which I was totally okay with. You know, I was totally okay with that. Had no problem with that. But, you know... That's what I wanted to do my entire life. And that's why I looked up to my dad. Because to me, he was my hero. And that's why I didn't want to go to war with my dad. Because, you know, I cared about him. And looking back now, I do wish I had never given in to that. Because if I had known that Tips TV was a liar... I would not have done that. But this kind of shit that I get put through every day. That's why I'm not getting anywhere. Is because of these evil ass people. And they don't want to tell you guys the real truth. Because they don't want to be called out. They don't want to look like shit. You know what these people do? They break terms of services with YouTube. If you go on to YouTube's terms of services, there is a section that says you are not allowed to steal someone's content without being transformative. Like, if you're a reaction channel, you're allowed to be a reaction channel. You're doing something transformative. You're reacting to something. People like N-Word Boy don't do that. They just blatantly steal stuff. They steal music. They steal, you know, my videos. And there's even video evidence that I've put out recently of N-Word Boy openly admitting to stealing my stuff. Because he does not want to see me be successful. He wants to make sure that I fail, just like Marty wants to make sure I fail. But that's what these people do. That's the kind of shit that these people do. They use people and use people. And if you want to know who the Inquisitor is, if you go on to YouTube and you look up the Inquisitor on um, TikTok, if you just type in TikTok the Inquisitor and you look up the documentary on him, his story is very similar to mine. And I do mean very, very similar. And unfortunately, he ended up taking his life. As a result of what these trolls did to him. But now you guys know the truth about why I haven't been able to get anywhere. And why I wake up every day so fucking depressed. And, you know, it's, it's not that I'm hiding it. I'm not trying to hide it. But I put on the smile knowing that I have amazing fucking people like you guys that support my channel. I have amazing people like you guys that show love to me, that show support for me. And I know that my content isn't for everyone. I know that, you know, a lot of people hate what I do. A lot of people, 
you know, like to talk shit and this and that and the other. And that's fine. You know. You know, people can talk shit, whatever. But I'll be honest, I am tired of being bullied. I am sick of being attacked. And I want you guys to know the real truth about what these people do. I wanted you guys to know and to understand how I became a victim of extortion and cyberbullying and blackmail. And the reason why I say blackmail is because there's been times where Marty has been like, look, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. This is what's going to happen if you don't do this. And that in itself is blackmail. That is the classic form of blackmail. But now you guys understand the truth. Now you guys understand how I got into this position that I'm in that I don't want to be in. I want to be able to put out good content. I want to be able to be a pro streamer again. I want to be able to make an honest living for myself. And with people like Styled or Styled Moth, with people like Bishop Wyatt and Eddie, and all these evil people, it's very hard for me to do that. Which is why I'm asking you guys to please help me put this out there. You know, show people my videos, show people this podcast. You know, show people everything. You know, show them my channel and show them what kind of a cool person I actually am. Because I'm not an evil person. I would never want to hurt anyone. But when I get put, just like any normal person, when I get pushed to a certain point, I fucking snap. And I've gotten to the point to where I have snapped so much Because I am tired of being bullied. I am tired of being pushed around. And I am tired of being hurt. I am tired of being picked on. I am sick of the bullshit. And I am tired of these people getting away with this crap. But to you guys that have showed so much love and appreciation for me. I appreciate you guys. I do. I genuinely and wholeheartedly appreciate y'all that have shown so much love and support for me and my family. And I know what you guys are thinking too with all this stuff going on. Well, can't you get a lawyer to do something? Unfortunately, no. When I went to jail and I got out, we got lucky to get the lawyer that we had who helped. We got very lucky. And I mean, we got very, very lucky with that. Because the lawyer that I had actually ended up giving us a very, very good deal. And I mean a very good deal. Like, he was, he was a good dude. Like, he ended up giving us a great deal. And that's the only reason why, you know, we got the deal that we got with him. And unfortunately, we can't afford a lawyer to fight back. Which is why I'm asking you guys to share this around on all platforms, on social media. Share this around with your friends, your family. Let people know what these people do. Share this podcast and let people know what the fuck is actually up. Because these people are evil. And I know it might seem that I'm angry all the time. But now you guys understand why. Because I constantly get bullied. I constantly get attacked. But uh. With that being said, I just want to say thank you guys. 
This has been Behind the Comments Podcast, Episode 3. I love you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning for another gameplay video. As always, stay humble, stay positive, keep being yourself and keep chasing your dreams, and stay ghostly, guys. I love y'all, and good night.